Hey everyone, welcome to the tutorial for deploying a Linksys Velop wireless home solution and connecting it to your existing network. This allows you to leverage a scalable wireless solution in your home while maintaining connectivity for your devices that connect using Ethernet cables. The Velop wireless solution is designed to replace your existing wireless setup. That being said, there's a particular way to connect the Velop with your ISP and commercial router so that you can extend your physical network into the wireless domain. This is a technique known as bridging. This helps when we have services that do not operate well across NATed boundaries such as AirPlay. With a flat network, all of my devices, whether they're wireless or physical, can communicate with each other. Now let's have a look at the physical connections between the VELOP primary node and the other network devices. The white Ethernet cable is connected to the internal network port of my ISP modem. The second Ethernet cable is connected to the uplink or internet port of my internal router. It's important that we connect these in the right order. Next we see that the VELOP access point is connected to the internal port of the ISP router. Once our connections are in place, we can use the Linksys wireless app on an iOS or Android device to complete the basic configuration of the VELOP nodes. With a three node system, it will take approximately 10 minutes per node. The steps are pretty straightforward. Simply launch the app on your phone or tablet and follow the on-screen instructions. Within minutes, your wireless mesh system is configured and you're ready to start custom configuration. Once each node has joined the system, a diagnostic check will run to make sure that you place the node in an optimal location. Now let's jump into the custom configuration of your Linksys wireless network. To do this, we need to access the web interface of your Vela wireless router. Simply type in 192.168.1.1 into any web browser that is on a system connected to your wireless setup. Once there, click on this CA at the bottom right hand corner. That will take you to the customization menu. Once inside the customization menu, you'll see most of the normal configuration options that you see on any modern Linksys router, but we're going to focus on connectivity under router settings. Once you're in connectivity, then we're going to focus on local network. The local network tab is where you define the parameters for your local network. Starting on the left, you will see the router details. This section allows you to customize the host name for the router, the IP address scheme for the network, and the subnet mask which determines how large or small your network will be. This VELOP system only allows you to have up to a slash 16 which offers 65,534 hosts or devices on your network. Let's click edit. The host name is the default and that's fine for now. The IP address and subnet mask are the important areas I want to focus on. Since I'm replacing my internal router with this VELOP router, I will use the same IP address scheme and subnet mask that was, on, that was configured on my internal router since this router will now be in charge of issuing IP addresses to my connected devices. Here on the right, we can configure the DHCP server options such as IP scope, lease times, and DNS options. These parameters get configured on any device that attaches to the wireless network using DHCP. Now you might be wondering, why am I replacing the IP addressing from my internal router and putting that configuration here? The answer to that is really quite simple. As I stated in the beginning, the VELOP system is designed to replace your existing wireless solution. Therefore, we want the VELOP system to be the core of our internal network and the internal router will simply become an extension of the VELOP system using bridging. To do this, we need to log into the existing internal router and go to the connectivity section. In my example, I have already put the internal router in bridge mode. As a result, you will notice that the configuration options have been limited to the three that you see here. Now click on connectivity. Once the connectivity menu opens, click on internet settings. And when the internet settings opens, you will have to change the connection type. If this is the first time that you've navigated to this menu since you've set up the VELOP wireless access point, then you will have to change the connection type from automatic configuration to bridge mode. In bridge mode, that means that this internal router is now receiving network information from the VELOP access point. So all of the information that we configured on the local network tab on the VELOP is now being published to this internal router. Simply click apply and all of those settings take place. Now that the internal router is in bridge mode, it is an active device on our network just like any phone, tablet, gaming system, or computer that will be connected once the configuration is complete. In order to access the internal router and manage it from the network, we need to set the IP address. 
There are two methods to achieve this, obtain automatically, DHCP, or static assignment. For simplicity, I am using DHCP for the internal router. Since I'm using automatic configuration for the IP addressing of this router, I can ignore the remainder of this section. If I want to find out what the IP address of this router is, simply click on Troubleshooting, Diagnostics, and on the right hand side you'll see Internet Addresses. This is the IP address that is on the internet facing port of this internal router and this IP address was obtained from the local network section of the VELOP access point that we configured earlier in this example. Now that we've verified the internet IP address of the internal router, our configuration is complete. There's one last thing we need to do, and that's turn off the wireless access point for this internal router because we don't want it to overlap the VELOP system. I've already done this, so I'll cancel out of that. This concludes our tutorial for how to set up your Linksys access point with your existing internal router. I hope this has been helpful. Please leave your comments below. Thank you for watching.